Hey, I'm going to speak more on the law versus the spirit or the flesh versus the spirit. Um, as I was reading the word and meditating on this, furthermore, I then began to think, oh wow, <laughs> this is very important. This is so important that this is the, one of the first things that the enemy does. He tries to steal, kill, and destroy. And what he does is, is when somebody first begins, or whenever somebody first um, comes to Christ and is a babe and born again, one of the first things that the devil does is stack religion on them. And when one of the first things he does is not only stacks religion, but as you read the word, he tries to say, see, Paul talked about putting away this sin and this sin and this sin and this sin. Peter said to put away this sin and this sin and this sin and this sin and this sin. And this sin. Hey, are you really saved? since you didn't put those sins away and not only that but hey keep looking to sin strive in your flesh and there's no grace there it's death it's administration of death and I'm just the more I think about it, the more I get angrier. <laughs> um, it's one of those things is, it's one of those things where you as a Christian have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. And, 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 and you know what? And I thought too, I thought too, because I was thinking, you know, for me, I had to go through trial and error, trial and error for years. And, you know, depending on the person, you may need to go through the trial and error in order to get the revelation from the Lord. And I'm not trying to sound like um, weird or anything, but sometimes that's what it takes because God knows who his children are. He knows how to get to his child and speak to his child and minister his, to his child. And he absolutely knows what to do with his child at all times. So sometimes people, sometimes uh, people are brought up into grace as a little child, a little child. And, you know, it's amazing. And they may fall into law later on in life, but they bounce, they jump back, they bounce back really fast. You know, some people get saved like me um, in their middle twenties and lived a reckless life <laughs> and become very zealous or zealous at first because they knew whose they used to be and they don't like it. They hate it. They don't even like the sin garment that they have to live in, you know? So, Either way, the devil is always trying to creep in religion. He's always trying to put religion, religion. Look to yourself, look to yourself, look to yourself. The Bible is full of grace. Even in the Old Testament, the symbolism is full of grace. You read Abraham and Sarah's story, full of grace. You read Ruth, her story, full of grace. You read 
Rahab and her story, full of grace. You read all of the New Testament. And like I'm going to read to you, like I just read. I literally just read this. Um, let me go get it. Um, it's in Second Peter chapter 1. Um, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. You know, the openings and the endings are always greeted and left with grace and peace. Grace, grace, Three grace. Years. Grace and more grace. Um, chapter, uh, I'm sorry, verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Like, we are being taken. Do y'all know that we're in a different realm? We're in a different realm. We're in a higher calling. We're in a higher glory. We're in a high, you can't get higher than what we're already in. You know, even the angels, even the angels cannot comprehend this. Okay? And it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature have an escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. It's not that we're, it, we didn't escape it. God transferred us out of it. It's glory to God. And let me tell you, it is glory to God that, because I had read too in Titus chapter 2 where it says um, how God, it is all glory to him that and he teaches us all things, including denying all ungodliness. Now that depends on each of, of our lives. We're all in, we're all in different. We, we all are different. Okay. So my life looks totally different than your life, right? God deals with me on a different level than he deals with you. Um, as far as ministering to us on Teaching us all things on what, and he does it in the name of love, by the way. He doesn't, it's not through condemnation. But I guess what I'm saying is, even that is all glory to God. Even he, him taking away X, Y, and Z out of your life, that's all glory to God. And even in the future, when he takes X, Y, and Z out of your life, that's going to be all glory to God. It has nothing to do with you still. Do you understand? This is more of a... Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is more of a glorious ministry, okay? That angels cannot even comprehend. And, and then it goes on to say, And beside this, and giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to the knowledge temperance, and to the temperance patience, and to the patience godliness, and to godliness brother kindness, and brother kindness charity. For if these things be in you, because they are, <laughs> and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren. What is barren? Barren means if you are, you are, Barren is like unfruitful. You should not neither be barren nor unfruitful. Okay? Why? Because God liveth in you and he is the flow through you and he is the life through you and he is the way through you and he is the love through you and he is all things through you and he does it all through you. Right? It has nothing to do with you. And then it says, into the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that I'm whispering because my family is in the other room. <laughs> But he that lacketh these, th these things, he that lacketh these, these things is blind. Right? And he cannot see far off. Right? 
And then it says, and forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Takes it back to Hebrews. You have forgotten that you were purged of your old sins. Why? Because the devil wants you to focus on your sin. When God has already translated you into life. The devil is the most stupidest thing in this world. And his old tricks, his old tricks still trick, but they're pathetic. It's pathetic. And it says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't want this video to go too long because um, I'm noticing that I am losing subs and I really don't care because it's all glory to God. Because I absolutely... And positively am enjoying Christ. And this absolutely is what he is trying to say is that I want my people in liberty, not bondage. 